This is Dasher 360, which is Project Dasher reimagined with the Forge platform. So first, we're going to go ahead and log in with our Autodesk credentials. And this is going to take us to our project list inside Dasher 360. So from here, we can sort of we can navigate down through the various projects that we have been added to. Uh, we have a couple of projects we're opening up here um, in, from the Complex Systems Research Group. But then we're going to go ahead and open the, the models directly using the shortcuts at the top of the page. So here we're going to start off by opening the 210 King Street East model, uh, which is one of the offices that we have in Toronto. Now, once this is loaded, we're going to go ahead and show the sensors that are um, tracked inside this particular building. So you'll see a mixture of green and gray sensors. As we hover over the green sensors, you'll see a tooltip come up for each. And if we click while that tooltip is, is displayed, we can get a plot showing the various data associated with that sensor. And if we zoom in and zoom in, then we'll see eventually we get down to even the noise detected for that particular for that particular sensor. Now, what's interesting about these sensors is that um, you know, although the data that's being displayed for these sensors is that, of course, it's multi-scale. So as you're zooming in, it refines and refines, and you get a greater level of detail. Uh, and but and yet the experience is smooth. So we have roll-ups of the data at different levels. Next, we're seeing a sensor list, which is a way to manage the various sensors in the in the building. There, we've turned off the grey sensors by clicking on Hide Unconnected, and then as we hover over the various items. In the sensor list, we can see that they they display inside <clears throat> inside the main view, and vice versa. We can hover across the sensors in the main view, and they show up in the sensor list, or we can identify where they are in the sensor list. Next, we're going to navigate down to the fifth floor of the building, which is where most of our sensors are located, and that's going to isolate the, the geometry from that particular floor. Um, and we can see there's a particular area of, of interest there in the sense we have most of our sensors in that one place. Now we're going to hide the textures and apply some surface shading to, to show the temperature data as it spreads across that particular area of the building. So we can see, do the same thing for humidity, not just temperature, and the same thing for CO2 or for the electrical current uh, sensor information that we have for that area. But the next thing we're going to do is actually see that in an animated way. Now, by default, we we have one, um, you know, we have one item in the timeline that allows us to animate that information across a certain time period. At some point, you'll have the ability to add these yourselves. But this, for now, is just a, an initial one that's been added by default. But you can certainly go ahead and first of all, modify the the settings res related to this, whether it's the the resolution. Or the, or the rate at which the data is, dis is displayed. But you can also go ahead and modify the, the timing as well. So you can grab the blue bars at either end of the, of the timeline and adjust those. And here we're seeing that the, we can modify the units or the, modify the type of data that's displayed. So now we're going back to see the whole model again. And from here, we're going to see a different way of navigating into the model. So we're going to open up the Building Navigation tab. Now here we see a similar thing as we saw with the breadcrumbs, but in this case, we're going to be able to, to go in down to a particular room. And if we double-click on the lobby, for example, it's going to take us into first-person view. And so you can see we're in the lobby of the 210 King Street East building. From here, once we've navigated the uh, move the cursor around to the direction we want to move in, we can use either the arrow keys or the WASD keys, a bit like you would with a video game, to navigate through the 3D model this way. Now here we're going to navigate to a, an area of interest. Um, so there's lots of sensors displayed there, so if we turn on, in, in this case it's useful to turn on sensor occlusion, which is also in the menu, and this allows you to only see the sensors that are in your immediate line of sight. Um, and so now we're going to show that actually with, with this version of Dasher, we've made a lot of performance improvements. So already as you, as you navigate around, um, you can see that the, the, the performance is more or less real time in terms of the capability of navigating around with sensors occluded. So here we're going to go to, a, to an office where we have some information that we care about. We have green sensors in, in, this, in this immediate vicinity. And here we're going to bring up the data associated 
with the sensors inside inside this particular office. So much as, as we saw before, you can zoom in, you can you can manipulate the data. Now we're going to bring up the the sensor list and we're going to find out where the sensor is for this particular um, this particular graph and we're going to add it into a, an easy dashboard which makes us easy makes it easy for us to find in the future. So this das dashboard is typically set up by an administrator and is shared across all the users. Now if we clicked on that item what we actually saw is that it removed the the the, the graph. Um, it'll toggle it on or off whether it's displayed or not. Um, and you'll see we we then went ahead and removed that particular item from the, the dashboard. Now I'll bring up the navigation tab on the dashboard and this stores, much as we had with, with the sensors and the graphs, this, these are shortcuts to different views inside the building. So here we're going to go and click on various rooms, one by one, various locations. Uh, and once again, it's a simplified way for people to, to get access to the data that's most interesting to them. Um, now in time we're going to find different ways of doing this, we're going to be able to add, let you add in additional, d additional tabs, but for now we have those two tabs available to, for use inside Dasha 360. So the next item is kiosk mode. So this is um, something that's been added fairly recently. I, we're not going to click on it here, but if you were to click on it you'd see it goes through um, feature by feature and shows a great deal of what Dasha can do. So now we're going back to our overall dashboard and we're going to load in a different model. And this model is for the NASA research or NASA Ames research facility. Uh, a couple of things you'll see when it loads. I mean, this is also a very large model, so, it, so it's going to take a, uh, a little, uh, well, a few seconds to load. We haven't reduced this um, for the video. But what you're going to see is also once, once everything loads in that you're going to see the the logo, the NASA logo is in the bottom right, so we do have that capability of, of, of adding a custom logo into the Dasher 360 view. So here we're going to go ahead and navigate to the second floor and then take a look at the surface shading as it's animated across the second floor of this particular facility. So here you can see, you know, we have more data. Uh, we're going to, to zoom in a little bit onto here so you can get a, a nicer view. You really do get a sense of of how surface shading can be a, a valuable tool for people to absorb lots of information in a short period of time because you can very quickly see where the hotspots are and and deal with with the issues related to those. So that's temperature. We're going to flip across as well and see different data that we might have. In this case, we're going to check the CO2 values where we have somewhat more sporadic data that's collected there because we don't have the same sensor coverage. Um, but you can certainly see that there's data also associated with the CO2 units. So back, back again to a third model, we're going to take a look at the Pier 9 building. So for this particular project, we're modeling a, a bridge inside the Pier 9 facility. And we've added sensors to this bridge in terms of accelerometers and strain. So first of all, we're going to bring up the model, but then we're going to navigate through to that bridge's location inside the model and take a look and see uh, how the stress information is for that. So here we're going to navigate through pretty quickly uh, to the area that's of interest. And from here, we can check the sensors. So this is the bridge that we have inside inside Pier 9, and then we're just going to turn on surface shading immediately. Now, that was a quick run through of the features for Dasha 360. Thank you very much for your attention, and we hope you found this useful. Thank you.